Hey everyone, welcome back to Alf's Mustang Garage. Today we're working on a 1967 Mustang Coupe and the fuel gauge is not reading correctly. It only comes up to about a quarter of the tank even when the tank is completely topped off. So today we're gonna diagnose that for you and see if we can come up with a remedy. So first things first, if you're starting to see a lot of my videos, I really appreciate uh, the feedback, the growth we've been experiencing. If you wanna help us grow and continue to make uh, quality classic Mustang videos, uh, do help us out by liking, subscribing, uh, commenting, all the above if you'd like. And uh, that does kind of help accelerate our growth and continue and then we can continue to produce more videos and everything for your, you guys so anyways here is our gauge with the key on we only come up to a quarter tank so and we just barely topped off the fuel tank on this thing and so we should be reading more than a quarter of a tank so anyways first things first we got to get underneath the car. Okay, so up underneath the car, um, here's our fuel tank and our fuel tank level sender. Okay, here's our fuel line going out. And then we have this one electrical wire that plugs into the tank. Okay, so this wire is actually the ground wire for your gauge. Okay, so the way this works, and you have to kind of understand how this works, is depending there's a there's a, a there's a float with a potentiometer sensor so as it changes the level it will provide more or less ground for the gauge and thus make the gauge change okay so the first thing we need to do is just kind of check this electrically to see if we have a problem there if everything checks out electrically, then you have a bad fuel tank sender, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to check everything electrically right now. Okay, so first thing that you need to do is you need to turn the key to the on position. So uh, is the key on to accessories, engine off, and what this does is it should send power down to here. Now, if everything's like correct from the factory, it's gonna get a pulsating voltage, okay? So, what I have here is my test light. Now, your test light has to be hooked to a good ground. So, to verify that I have a good ground, I've run a test lead all the way from the engine block, which is pretty much the battery. So that way I know for sure I have a good ground. If you just kind of connect this to any old chassis ground back here, um, that might work. But if you're not grounded good enough and you're not getting power here, and it's actually because your test light's not being grounded, then it can just kind of throw off your entire diagnosis. So, um, now that I have been able to verify that I have a good ground, I'm all I'm pretty much connected directly to the battery ground so you can't get any better ground than that so now we need to test to see if we're getting our pulsating voltage or any kind of voltage here on the plug okay so our key is on our test light is grounded we're on of our on our plug here and as you can see I have a pulsating voltage you can see the light pulsating right there Okay, so what that means is my entire circuit is good. The constant voltage regulator on the back of the instrument cluster is good. Everything electrically is good. It should be good. So the only thing that's left is this. The other possibility is the gauge itself. So now I'm gonna show you how to test the gauge itself to see if the gauge is bad. Once we eliminate the gauge from this e equation, the only thing left is the fuel level sender. Okay, so the next step is to check our gauge and see how our gauge is working. So we're gonna take our test leads again, 
and we're going to put it in there far enough so it's contacting the metal contact and we're going to put this to a good uh, a good ground back here I don't want to hook it on the battery ground because I want to be able to verify that the fuel tank is grounding itself to the chassis so I just hooked it on the rear axle U-bolt and I'm connected directly to the single wire going to the fuel level sender. Okay, now it's important to note that you need to do this with the key off, okay? And then climb into the vehicle. And the reason why is because if you connect it directly to ground and your key's already on, you're gonna burn up your gauge if your gauge is good. Okay, so if you noticed, the gauge spiked, okay? And the reason why it spiked is because the gauge is now fully grounded. The gauge is fully grounded, which means you have eliminated the fuel level sender from the circuit. And this is why you wanna connect it first and then come inside the car and then turn the key on. Otherwise, if you leave this connected to ground for too long, you're just going to burn up your gauge and then you're going to have a bad fuel level sender and a bad gauge. Okay. So let me show you that one more time. Key is coming on and it just goes directly to full. Okay. So I know my gauge works. I know the circuit is good. The only thing left is the fuel level sender itself. So very very common i see this all the time but those are the two things that i do to test to make sure it's electrically sound make sure the gauge is is fine before i tear into the fuel tank i'm going to drain that fuel tank because i topped it off so awesome um but anyways fuel level sender is what we got to do to fix this car okay so we're back underneath the car we drain the fuel tank and now we're going to remove the fuel level sender. You gotta watch out because even though you drain the tank, you probably will still get a little bit of fuel coming out when you undo this. So just kind of watch yourself there. Okay, so now that you have your fuel line disconnected. So what you have is kind of like a, a locking ring with an O-ring like this. Here's your new one. And so what we have to do is just kind of like tap this out and turn it and then it should turn and pop out like that. Okay, so for obvious reasons, you don't want to like be hammer on this thing like crazy to make any kind of sparks or anything like that, but I'm just going to put a flathead screwdriver on one of these ends, and I'm just going to gently tap it. Okay, so that's the lock ring that's off right there. And then you should be able to pull this out. And you can see what we're working with here. Okay, so we just got this fuel level sender out, and this is like the weirdest thing I've ever seen. I have never seen anything like this before, but inside this fuel tank, there's like this plastic liner of some sort that is 
just kind of like come off and it's inside the tank and it's obviously like obscuring the float level of, of the field level sender but it's just like the weirdest thing and I don't think this is a uh, factory tank this is definitely an aftermarket tank but there's some it's coated with something internal and that coating is just coming off <laughs> that is super weird so um, I thought we were gonna have a fuel level sender which this may be fine but holy cow I'm going to put a fuel tank in this car to get his fuel level gauge to work because I mean that's like hard I mean I can touch it it's like it's hard it's hard plastic it's not it's weird that's super weird uh if you guys are watching this and you've seen this before like i want to know about it i want to know what that is i want to know where this tank came from that is really weird um drop a comment below if you've seen this before because that's the first one for me Okay, well, to be continued, I guess we'll be putting a tank in this car. So anyways, thanks for watching. Um, as always, we're here to help you keep your Mustang on the road and out of the garage, and we'll catch you next time.